Okay, so uh, welcome along everyone to this uh, session this morning on reasons to, to join CELIP. Uh, this session is being re recorded, but we will uh, we'll do it in, in, in presenter mode, so, so it would just be me or the, the slides on the screen. Uh, I'm, I'm really pleased to have you all here. Uh, the reason for this event is, you know, we, we do a lot of um, membership promotion around, around the universities and different things like that, but we know there's a lot of people that perhaps might want to know a bit more about what, what the benefits of joining still it might be for for yourselves and then we can answer any questions uh we've just got a short presentation today and then we'll have a little bit of time for q a if you want to ask any questions uh, if you do want to ask any questions you can we're a small group today so you can put your hand up if you want just using the reactions on um on, on zoom but if you'd be more comfortable just put your question into the, the chat function and and i'll pick it up at at the end and i'm happy to, to answer that as as we go along um, I'm Sean McNamara, I'm Head of CELIP Scotland, and we also have Kirsten Macquarie here as well, who is the Membership Officer um, for, for CELIPS, and that, that is the, the, the CELIP Scotland team, and they'll tell you a bit more about us and, and, and a few other things as we go along. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just share the screen, and hopefully you can see this. Justin, can you see that? Okay. And just to say to everyone, also just one final thing, um, keep your mic muted if you don't mind, just, just to avoid any background noise. Uh, cameras, leave off if you're happy to do so, but but if you'd like to turn them on, feel free to do so as uh, as well. To totally optional on that front. Okay, so reasons to join CELIP. Our presentation today just going to cover some of the benefits and 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 some of the, the reasons why why people would would perhaps join the professional association so if you don't know I, I assume you probably do but just to give you a bit of background on who CELIP are so we are your professional association or the professional association for for library and information professionals uh, and I'll explain what that means because I think sometimes one of the things some people wonder is whether they are a professional in, uh, in inverted commas and I think that 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 you know the fact is, it, it can be a, a, a grey area, and I think that, that uh, anyone working in the sector, I think, hopefully, would would be able to find a place within our professional association. We operate under Royal Charter. All that means is we can award people chartership so they become chartered library or information professionals uh, in whatever sector they're in. Uh, the Queen was our patron, and and we'll be we'll be getting a new patron um, soon soon as part of that. But there's a privy council, and they they, they award us chartered status. Okay, so why join CELIP? Now I'll go into all of these in different ways and in a little bit more detail, but I'll just give you a quick overview of some of the headlines. One of the main reasons that you would choose to join CELIP is career support, and that can take a wide variety of forms, whether that be, you know, speaking to Kirsten and I and getting a bit of a, a advice on things or getting some information or support or, or just, just general guidance on, on what you're doing in your career, or it might be more through, you know, workshops or, or events or, or other information that we send out. We'd like to think that we're there throughout your career to, to provide different support. And it may be if you're at the start of your career, you might need a lot of new support in, in, in you know, finding jobs or things like that. Or if you're a mid or, or, or later career professional, you might need a different type of support. A big part of what we do, and we'll, tell, we'll go into that in a bit more detail, is advocacy. And that basically means advocating for your skills as library and information workers on your behalf. And that comes into national representation as well. We represent you on a national level to government, to local government, and do our best to, to, to stand up for the, the skills of library and information professionals, uh, uh, either via campaigns or general advocacy. By professional recognition, again, I'll mention this uh, in more detail, but that's about recognising your skills as a professional, and that's via chartership or, or other qualifications. Network's a big thing, and we do that in a number of ways that I'll tell you about, but it's about networking you with the wider profession so that you feel supported or, you, or it might help you with your career goals or just to know what else is going on. Training events, we, we provide a range of them. Financial support, we provide various funding opportunities, uh, either from CILIP as a UK-wide body or from us as CILIP Scotland. Uh, and that can be either through, through small funds, larger funds, or things like the Benevolent Fund, which is provided by CILIP to, to help people who have who are have, uh, facing hardship or, or have perhaps lost their job. Much like trade unions, although we're not a trade union, we do provide some of the same services, such as legal advice. There is a helpline that, as a member, you would have access to, and you can then and then use that to 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 uh, get legal advice as you go on. Uh, 
and news and analysis uh, and i'll explain how the various ways that we provide news and analysis uh, going going forward um so some common misunderstandings now this is some of the things that we hear throughout across the sector which which uh you know we'd like to, to clear up which people maybe have doubts about because i think things have changed over the decades uh, anyone can join Silip. So you don't, some people think that perhaps you have to have had a library information undergraduate or postgraduate degree. Uh, and that's not true. You know, we what we see ourselves as a, a professional association for, for every everybody, whether you are uh, qualified or not qualified. Um, Silip membership is just as relevant for whether you are a library assistant or a library manager or an information professional at an entry level or in a senior management role. We have services or, or or offers or products or 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 just just support which can can last you whatever role you're in. So uh, uh, I'd, you know do do consider joining us wherever you are. And chartership that is that qualification. Now often if you're applying for a job and it asks for a library information qualification, and you think well I don't have that, and some of you may, some of you may not. Do check with them whether chartership is, is is accepted because you, regardless of your qualifications, can undertake chartership with us, regardless of, 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 of where you are. So I'll not go through all this in detail, but recently um Silip did a consultation of a what is a professional. Uh, I think that you know there was a there was a time before that, you know, it was it was this idea that if you were sort of upstairs, you were a professional, and if you were on the front line, you're you're not. And that's not what we see that as anymore. Uh, we believe that that you know anyone working in libraries, information, knowledge, data are all under the profession you're all part of the information profession and have underlapping skills and, and shared values it's, it's a community of people that are all working under 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 one profession who are then looking for skills and qualifications or regulation as part of that so we believe that you know any practitioner can de demonstrate professionalism and therefore can be part of the professional body it doesn't matter if, what qualifications you hold you know it's great if you hold a, a particular qualification whatever that may be but you know, we offer CPD for for whatever qualifications you offer and offer the means for people to develop your professional skills signal your commitment to the ethics of the professional and we have a set of ethical principles and if you can commit to them you can show that you want to develop your skills then there's definitely a, a home for you with within Silip I would hope so a little bit about us uh Silip Scotland are an independent charity this is just our legal status so but if you join Silip you become a member of Silip Scotland as well. So I, I'd like to, to, to think it's a bit of an added bonus. You do get that extra bonus of, of having Kirsten and I to support you and provide Scotland specific events, but you also get the, the, the benefits of the 30 strong team that are based in, in London and the surrounding areas. We're funded by Silip. So, you know, basically you, your membership fee goes to Silip, then they've give us a grant and pay for 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 Kirsten and I to, to work for for Silip in Scotland, and we have our own office in in the centre of Glasgow. Uh, who do Silip represent? So this diagram gives you a little bit about that. You'll see that higher education, public libraries, and school libraries are the predominant sectors. But uh, as I'll I'll show you in the next slide as well we are starting to see growth in all those other areas so about 40 percent or so of our, our members are um are in other sectors now so you know whether you are in in public or school or, or academic libraries still very much a, a strong part of the membership there but you'll see that that pie um is now showing a lot more uh people in government and in health and law so a lot more people coming into the sector are going into a much wider variety of roles for example people end up perhaps working for a charity as, as the sole information professional they are or working for, for a legal agency and or, or prison libraries and things like that so it's a really changing and and diverse sector in terms of what where people are, are ending up uh, although there are still jobs in, in in those those core sectors but obviously with financial pressures that 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 does does just change as well we've got 1200 members in scotland 10,000 across the whole U UK, and, and they really are across all of those sectors um, that I've mentioned. Right, on to some of the benefits that you get from members. We offer a lot of training and events. We do a real mix of online events and in-person. We used to do maybe three in-person events every year, and that was really sort of our main CBD offer, but that's really extended now. 
at the moment when COVID is still a, a, a challenge, at the moment we're doing an annual conference in person in June. Uh, we did, we returned to that this year and, and, and managed to sell that out and, and hopefully that will continue. We'll review it in future. We may start to bring in some more in-person events, but uh, one of the silver linings during the pandemic was that we uh, moved a lot of things online and actually now offer a lot more uh, regular training and events. Uh, and as a SILIT member, almost all of our online learning is, is completely free. I think at the moment, all of it's all of it's free uh, and you get a big discount on the an annual conference uh, places as well. And we also offer various free places and bursaries for that as well. But we've had over a thousand places booked on, on online learning. There's a, there's a lot um, coming up. Some of that is actually free to non-members as well. So do have a look, um, but, but the majority of it does require a membership to, to get that. We have two mini conferences coming up soon. One's called Emerging Leaders. Now, this is very much for new or mid-career professionals. It's all about you know leadership skills, uh, interview skills. It's about uh, we've got actually speakers from unexpected sectors talking about you know how they got into map collections or or law libraries. So we we try and meet the needs of of, of different people no matter where you want to go. And library supporting learners very much about further education, higher education, and school libraries. And these are all half day day events. And if you become a member, you can, you can join join them for free. Uh, I mentioned networking. So uh, networking can be a not you know not everybody loves that word, and you know not everybody's comfortable doing it. But you know it can mean it in a softer sense. You know it's not all going up cold to somebody at a conference and introducing yourself. Our branch network is a really friendly and informal way to to make connections uh, with the wider sector. We've got six regional branches that cover the whole of Scotland. So say you're in Glasgow, you would automatically be part of West Branch. Um, and in Vernace, you'd be automatically part of North Branch and there's other, other regions as well. They've all got committees. So if you're a member, you can join the committee if you want, get some really good experience in supporting how to set up events, how to run a run a committee, how to plan plan, and, and and people find it really beneficial for their careers, and have told us that they've got jobs on the basis of being part of these things, and and, and that's genuinely heartening to hear. You don't have to join the committee; you can just go to the events that they run, meet, get to to know people, meet people, and get CPD and and get involved. Uh, for example, we had the 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 Libraries Week quiz night the other night. That was a uh, that's a fun and, and informal event that, that got people making connections, but we also have some stuff that, that's perhaps more more formal and, and a speaker talking and, and, and a chance to ask questions. A big part of membership that people really, really like is special interest groups. There's 30 special interest groups uh, across across the whole of the UK. So if you sign up as a member, you can be part of as many of them as you want. And what you'll get is newsletters, a chance to attend events, uh, hear about what's developing the sector. Six of them actually have Scotland subgroups. So that means that, that they are actually running stuff that really got Scotland type issues in mind. Um, so we've got academic research libraries, school libraries, metadata and discovery, local studies, youth libraries group, and the public and mobile libraries group. So, you know, if you are joining SILIP, I would say join as many of them as, as you can. We also have the SILIP BAME network, which is currently reviewing their, their name, but that's what it's currently called, uh, the LGBTQ plus network and the disability network. Now, these were set up via steering groups and are a chance for uh, issues that are affecting people um, within these protected characteristics um, in the library world to, to, to share and network and, and run events. And, and people can either sign up as, as allies of the network or be part of it. And, and there's always a lot going on. And we try to, to work in partnership with them in, in Scotland. Winspiration has been a series that, that Kirsten has led on uh, around um, feminism and, and, and women working in libraries and has had some fantastic events featuring Adele Patrick from the Glasgow Women's Library, Amina Shah, Dan Pennington, and, and, and there's, there's more events coming up, up soon as well. So, so do keep an eye on, on, on that. Uh, as part of all these events and networks, one of the things you may want to do, and you know, some people join just for this, uh, is professional registration. So these are our three qualifications, certification, chartership, and fellowship. Basically what it is, is you are using what is on the right there, and I'll share these slides so you can look at it in a bit more detail, but that is the professional knowledge and skills base. 
that is a matrix of skills that we have identified that we think information professionals or librarians have. You don't necessarily have them all, but you pick some of them, you assess yourself, you reflect on, on, on where you'd like to be, and then you go about building up a portfolio of evidence. Uh, I, I've, I've, got char I've got chartership, Kirsten's working towards chartership at, at the moment, um, I'm hoping to work towards fellowship at some point, but chartership is where probably most people working in the sector aim for. Certification uh, is, is a slightly more straightforward um, portfolio to build, but uh, chartership, if possible, is uh, both of them are very valid and you can do both you know, one after the other, or you can start wherever you, you think, and we'd happy to have a chat with you to, to, to pick what level you think you would be at. But you write a thousand word uh, statement and then you gather evidence and match it up to that. And it's all about, you know, reflecting on your organisation, your personal performance or the wider profession. And you build up different bits of evidence. It's all about critical reflection and there's loads of online support for that. And then you that is assessed and then you get awarded a chartered status. And then you can say that you're, you're a chartered librarian, which can really help you in the job market. Uh, to help with all of this, we have the Professional Development Fund. We put £5,000 every year towards members' development. So if you are a member and you see a training course that you think, or an event that you'd like to go to, you know, people have gone to Chicago with this, if they've gone to, to, to other events in the UK, £600 per bid. So you can apply and say, I'm doing chartership or doing certification, and I think that this event would really help with that. And you provide a statement and then it's assessed. It, you know, certainly recently with less events, this is under applied for. So if you are a member, then get applications in for it because you'd be surprised. You will, you will often, if you can justify it, there's, there's a good chance that you will get that, that support. And we currently have that open for events in January to March next year and you, you apply by December. New for this year, we've also included accessible technology. Obviously, we're all on Zoom these days. So we widened that out so that you can, if you need some accessible technology to help you attend events, um, technology uh, for, for, you know, whatever that may be, screen readers or other things like that, you can apply for that as, as well. We keep our members up to date. So one of the other benefits is you get lots of different content from us. You'll get a, a magazine called Information Professional. That's a UK wide journal all about different things that are going on in the profession. But also we do our own Silip Scotland newsletter that, 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 that Kirsten um, lovingly crafts every month. And that comes into your inbox and, and covers you know, events, news and other key things that are going on in Scotland. And at the bottom there, we've got our own Twitter, our own Instagram, and our own LinkedIn group. So follow all that if you want to keep up with the, the content we have. And Silip across the UK have similar accounts as well. We're just plucking our own because we're, uh, we're selfish for that. But there's there's great stuff all across the, the, the UK wide network. Uh, big part, you know, since, since 2010, you know, financial challenges, we have been more and more active around advocacy campaigns. We've just completed our two-year Libraries Are Essential campaign, which was gathering content, um, engaging with the press, engaging with, with local government and, and national government the year before to really make the case for why libraries are essential. We're always building up evidence. We're always building up that case. You know, we're a small team, but we try and do what we can. Uh, because we're a small team, we, we set up the Public Library Advocacy Network for Scotland. That's particularly because there's sometimes very acute challenges with, with public library finance. And we've, we've done the same for school libraries in the past as well, including helping get the strategy off the ground. Uh, but we're, we're always adapting to different challenges. Um, there's a logo there for Silip School Green. That is a, a resource bank that, 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 that we set up and, and, and different information and work going on around that. Um, and, and also there's, that is now influence the Green Libraries Network all across the UK, which which we support. Uh, and that's all about trying to to advocate for libraries' role within, within the environmental challenges that, that we all face. Libraries Week, ongoing, big advocacy push. You know, we try and get articles out in the press. We run lots of events, social media takeovers. So do have a look in, uh, on our Twitter feed if you want to see a bit more information about that. Uh, I'll share these slides, but there you can see a presentation that, that, that we gave uh, about the evidence. There's a QR code there as, as well. Uh, I'll maybe hover on over this in case anyone does want to scan it, but we'll, we'll send you these slides, but um, probably um, second half and uh, half of next week so that, so that you've got them all and you can you can have a, have a look at them in your own time. 
Uh, and now that we're at the end of a two-year campaign period, we'll probably now be looking at how we support, you know, as, as we move into into the next spell, um, if there are, you know, if, if you work in a service where you hear about budget proposals which you're worried about, get in touch with us. We, we, we need to hear about them, to know about them. And once we do, we will respond. And we have had some good success with that that um, and persuading councillors to review things uh, across Scotland. Some recent developments, we have uh, accessibility, anti-racism, climate action, LGBTQ+, and feminism resource banks. These are really useful. They're all on our website. They're hyperlinked in there. Great resources uh, that, that Kirsten's built up, and, and we continue to add to them. If you know other links that we should be adding, let us know. But it, it, it's a really useful source of information for your library or for you to, to know a bit more about what is out there for these different, different categories. Uh, and agendas and things like that that are going on. Recently, we made an equality, diversity, and inclusion commitment. And now this is us committing to try and increase diversity both within our board and our governance, uh, because we're a charity with a trustee board that governs what we do, uh, but also diversity in the whole membership. And we have started to see some 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 fruits of that and, and started to, to, to see a, a more diverse membership, but there's still a lot of work to do. And we're always updating that commitment to, to try and ensure that we're, we're uh, meeting those challenges. Another new thing, we have a research fund. So we put £10,000 into research. If you work for a service and you think you'd like to research something, even if it's just a small amount, just to, to show how libraries benefit key agendas, and these are just examples, climate change, cost of living, combating child poverty, then apply for that. The deadline's is in, in a few weeks, so you would need to give that some thought quite soon. And even if it's a small or large scale, any select member can apply and, and to, to undertake some advocacy. And you can work with a, an academic or you can do it yourself, depending on, on, on what you think you'd like to do. Some other recent developments, we've got the students and new professionals community. So if you are on this call because you are a recent um, joiner of the, the, the library and information professional profession, then uh, do look into that that community. They do lots of events for people at the start of their career uh, and, and also have a committee that you, you may want to, to con consider joining as well. Uh, they, they, they really are a wonderful, wonderful and very active group and we're really pleased to have them. We recently set up a mentorship and job shadowing scheme. So another benefit of your membership is you can get a mentor that's nothing to do with the chartership side of the thing, it's just a career mentor. We're trialing that at the moment. We actually, I think, have still maybe one or two species left for mentees. So if you would like to get a mentor, you know, join Silip, get in there, there, there soon and, and we can match you up. Uh, and in a few months time, we're going to review that and then just decide about extending it out. But it seems to be getting quite well received. So I, I'm, I'm hopeful that we'll, we'll continue doing that. And that, that is a, a, a good uh, additional membership benefit. Okay, so I think, I know Kirsten's been probably giving you some links. We'll save the chat. We'll send that around as well next week. Uh, so so you, you'll be able to, to get all those links if you if you haven't managed to copy them just now. There's the main link you need, um, become a member. That's That that allows you to join up. Uh, the membership categories there they have they have they have different rates depending on 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 where you are if you're working as i think probably quite a few of you will be as a practitioner out in the sector you, um, membership is usually around 160 pounds a year um so so that that works out you know sort of under 15 pounds a month paid by direct debit so it's uh you know you can you can start it and then cancel it if you want it's 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 something you know worth trying to see whether you feel that, that you get the benefit from it uh, and then continue to review that as, as as you go on. And that's our emails. We are always happy to have a chat, whether you're a member or not, we're always happy to have a chat and 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 tell you a bit more about this if you if you would like. <laughs>